One of them is uh, True Detective here, and this this will be the last one that I ask you about. You, you've got well, so many amazing movies the, it's, here. It is the best single season of television in history, in my opinion. Yeah, and the, never and the, seen it better. You and Woody on on camera together is the best thing I've ever seen. And the reason I wanted to bring it up today is um, I feel like at this time when this came out, there wasn't a bunch of huge movie stars that were taking TV shows where that is happening now, and with with theaters. Uh, almost near death here at this point with what Warner Brothers did and Disney and et cetera. Uh, I have a feeling a lot more huge movie stars are going to go back into television. You set the gold standard. Dan and I talk about this first season of True Detective all mm. the time. I mean, it is a masterpiece. What was the I decision miss- behind that? Yeah, and, and I'm, I'm with you. I miss it, man. Uh, I missed that show. That's I, had, I, I watched it like everybody else. Mm. I had it all. I had the screener. I had the whole season, but I said, no, every Sunday night. After we put the kids to bed, we're going to get that bottle of wine, honey, and we're going to go in and watch it. And I was involved in the Monday morning water cooler talk like everybody else. I was like, did you see that shit last night? I was, <laughs> you know, because I didn't know where the, I'd, I'd purposely forgotten where the, where the seat, where the episode breaks were. So I was watching going, whoa. And I oh, loved it and miss it. So that comes along. And yes, it's TV. And you're right. Not a lot of actors in me and Woody's position were going into television at that time. But it was much less taboo than maybe it used to be. Mm-hmm. But it was still sort of taboo. Um, I remember reading it, and they offered me the role of Marty Hart. They offered me Woody's role, to which I understood why they offered me, but I called him back and said, the dude who I can't wait to turn the page to hear what the fuck comes out of mm-hmm. his mouth, this guy rusted coal, man. This is this has got this has got fangs and fire, man. I go, you want, you give me rust and coal, I'm in. Well, they paused. Nick puts a lot on them. I think they went and watched some Killer Joe or something. I mean, because they were like, ooh, McConaughey for rust and coal. I didn't think that, right? And then they said yes. So then I go, okay. Now let me unpack this. Talk to my agent. And I remember going, do you have any concern that this is on TV? Because I don't. And he goes, me neither. And I said, you know, what I've been chasing is content, story, and character. And I don't give a damn what screen it's on. Mm. I think I'm right. Just chase that. Jake, this is this is this is hot shit, man. Let's go after this. I don't care. So we talked about is there something we should even you know discuss about it being on the small screen for about eight seconds. Other than that, it was like bam. Then I was like, I'm in, let's go. Uh, I'm curious as to uh, your thoughts of Woody Harrelson, what he said afterward, where he said, hey, I did not enjoy working with Matthew McConaughey on that because I didn't know Matthew McConaughey on that. I only knew the character he was playing every day. Yeah. And I, uh, it was because you guys seem like two guys that would hang out in real life. A yeah. Lot, to be so we, we thought you guys were partying. One of my best friends. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you guys seem like you fucking would have been high school friends and just never left each other that whole time. Well, here, no. Here's the thing with me and Woody. So Woody and I worked together three times and we hang out whenever we can in real life. And he and I get together, man, and then it becomes hard to know where I start and Woody ends yeah. and where he starts and I end. And we're going and it's comedy, right? Yeah. Even if it's drama, it's comedy. Well, we get on that and I've got my man, Rustin Cole, and Woody's comes up about a week, week before production. We've been doing, we've been doing re- rehearsals and stuff. Or I don't know if we rehearsed or not. Anyway, we've been working on the script and maybe we were already shooting some, but he's seeing what I'm doing as Rustin Cole. And he's like, buddy, I, I think, I think, What's what's going on? <laughs> Starts to worry about. I mean, I, I think we need a little le- little levity in this thing. And I'm just straight facing, like Rustin Cole. And he's like, "See, you're doing it. To, you're doing it again, man. You're doing it to me right now. This is me. Woody, we're offset. We're having a conversation. It's like, look, how you and I work is I hit the ball to you. You hit the ball back to me. I hit the ball back, and we go back and forth. But now I'm giving. I'm hitting you the first ball, and you're just standing there, and the tennis ball is going past you, hitting the back. Uh, fence and coming to a stop and you're still just staring at me. What the fuck? And I was like, and I remember telling this, I go like, and my hunch, Woody, is that over time through the episode, that may actually be funny. (laughs) It is. You can read, you can seriously read the exasperation and frustration on his face, particularly in those scenes where you guys are driving around in the car together. And you're just saying fucked up nihilistic shit. And he's like, God damn, dude. Can I get a fucking, can I get something for fuck's sake? Oh, it was so much fun because he would get so, and it, and it, and it worked, you know, because he would, he was getting exasperated with me. Mm. 
And like, what the fuck, man? So, so the it, story of True Detective is you trolling Woody Harrelson <laughs> for eight episodes, basically. I like it, man. I'm, I'm, I'm into it. I like it. 